Have you ever tried drawing with no eraser or a reference photo? I did, and here's what happened. First off, we're going to start with choosing the color that we're going to draw with. And of course, I'm going to be choosing green because somehow it's everyone's favorite color or something. No, I'm just kidding. Somehow green is actually, seems to be the least favorite color of just the majority of people, or at least the people I know. So I don't know, do you like green? First off, we're starting with mapping out just the head and the general proportions and whatnot. Okay, here's my floppy circle. So now that that's down, let's not do, that one was like kind of turning this way, so let's try something else. Let's just do it maybe this way, just to balance that other one out. And this is the moment where you're like, oh my goodness, th th this is just a blank canvas, right? Just getting over that fear and just starting is such a huge thing. And I'm personally really just figuring it out as I go. We're just gonna wing it and keep our fingers crossed that our portrait doesn't end up looking like Shrek. Now, you're probably wondering, why are you even doing this in the first place? What is going on? And the answer to that is that so many times you find yourself just drawing and erasing whatever you drew before, and you're sort of caught in this endless, I guess, cycle of just doing, drawing the same, the same line or stroke over and over again, and then erasing it and then still not being happy with it and not feeling loose. And then you end up so tense throughout the whole drawing process that it's not fun anymore. As this is the final video in a three part series of drawing with no erase challenge, we will finally get to see if drawing with no erase will actually help you be more comfortable with your strokes and enjoy the process of drawing. So here we've got one eye, two eye, um, we've got the nose. No, there's no way the eyes are that low, so they're going to be a little higher, obviously. So we're going to figure this out as we go, just like with the last portrait. So halfway. Hey, hold on. Maybe I'm going to move this out a little more, just kind of make the round, the circle more round and even, so we can kind of get where things are going to go. Uh, this is tricky. So I think the point right here, our line is right here more. It's kind of more tilted than it was before. Cause I'm trying to look at like the chin and stuff. Right here, you can see me going in and just defining the features more so just making their drawing in their shapes but still you as you can see here it's very very rough and the idea here is just to get in the area of where just just a general idea of where everything is and the area too of just how big each each facial feature is going to be Well, you're really lucky for popping on this video, if I can say so myself, because it's a full 20 minute real time portrait drawing practice. So you get to see the whole in-depth thing. Just, it's real. It's like Patreon, but free. So, so smash that like button if you are enjoying this video and please subscribe. Thank you so much. We have a huge growing community here. Right now when I'm going in, I'm going in and actually shading in just the the planes of the face. So just where light hits and you know, the planes of the face. And you can tell it's really, really rough at this moment. We're just, we're just blobbing things in, just the general area. Don't stress out about it. Don't overthink it. It's okay. So just, just go with it. Just go with the flow, see what problems come up and just fix them as you go. 
having a mental library or a mental or just experience of drawing the human face is going to be really helpful for you in this challenge. There are a bunch of awesome tutorials on YouTube. Leave me a comment if you think I should make one, but there's a ton of resources. So practice on nailing the general proportions of the human face so that you already have an idea where everything goes and it'll just make your journey so much easier. So on this channel, this past couple of weeks of uploads, I've been working a lot on portraiture, of just drawing portraits, and this is basically a culmination of everything I know. So right now, we got our base on this green face. I don't know what else to call it. Identifying the light source in your portrait when you're not using a reference is very essential because when you don't know where to put your shadows and highlights, well, then the whole the whole portrait is short if is a mishmash. So in the previous um, in the previous portrait, I actually made the mistake of missing and forgetting where my light source was coming from and it did create a couple of problems down the road so with this with this third portrait we are just blowing it i mean not blowing it we're just like plowing plowing just going through with it and wait until we start going in with a darker color we start to finalize where everything is and yeah it's going to look so cool at this point in the drawing process we have a general already foundation of where all our facial features are so now we're going in with some adjustments so right here I'm just defining the jawline more and we'll be changing the head a little bit and you know just looking and just taking a step back from your art and seeing what needs to be changed and if you have trouble with this of just seeing what's wrong with whatever you're doing just get up, go for, go take a drink, like take a little like, or just like look out the window for five seconds, you know what I mean? And come back with fresh eyes to your art and you'll, you will automatically just notice certain things. And I don't mean to be like, ugh, this is disgusting and horrible, I can't believe it. Like, don't put yourself down, but be like, okay, how can, how can you make this better? How can you make this better? What needs to change? to what needs adjustment really so and now we're going in with a darker color now that we have our proportions we've adjusted everything but the darker green color is just not working like as you can see the tip is terrible so we're gonna try and fix it and just dip it in water see what happens and fingers crossed it works i think it's better but not hmm not that good, but I think it'll do for now. Okay, so I think the eyes are a little too close over here, so I'm gonna move this one a little bit more that way. Just let the nose be where it is so that, you know, kind of give some personal space to each of the features. So. Just wait until you see the huge difference once we shade in all the shadow areas on this portrait. It starts to really come together. So the main parts right now that we're shading in is the planes of the face and the darkest areas. So as you saw before, we identified our light source. So the darkest areas on a portrait usually are near the eye sockets and um, and just the opposite, um, like for the nose, it's the opposite of opposite side of where the light hits. That's usually the darkest, like the outline part of the nose. Everything that protrudes a little bit from the face is going to cast a shadow. How do you cultivate creativity as an artist? How do you get creative when you don't feel like it? What makes you tick? Do you like a certain medium? Do you like watching certain videos? Are there any books you like? Going out in nature? Is that your answer? I found that whenever you feel like 
uninspired or you're like ugh it's not things are a little boring it's not as grindy like, you know you don't feel it as much that's kind of a sign for you maybe you should change something up just for once have some fun and maybe do a challenge figure out look up some challenge it could be this drawing with no erase challenge or you're like hey i'm gonna draw with a different color palette this time i'm gonna paint something in differently maybe if you draw women more or like female i'm like hey maybe you're like hey why don't you just draw a dude once in a while you know it, it keeps you on edge it it brings the sort of spontaneity back into art Speaking of comfort zones, what's your favorite art medium? Do you have maybe pencils and graphite? Uh, maybe you like painting? So if you do like painting, what kinds of paint do you guys, what kinds of painting do you like? Is it watercolor? Is it acrylics? So before, as a kid, I've always drawn primarily with graphite. I had this sort of pencil set with just the different darkness of pencil, like with pencils with different shades of, with different shade, yeah, different shades. So from going from HB, which is the lightest, to I think 6B. And if you look back on my channel to my first, first videos, you'll see that I draw with graphite. I draw with charcoal too, I drew with charcoal, but recently I started taking in color. Personally, color always scared me so much because it was much easier just to identify the values and it's just doing the sh doing the shading seemed to be just so much easier, isn't it? It's like just all you're doing is identifying where the darkest areas are and then just building off from there, right? But with color... Yeah, you gotta mix if you're painting, and it's a, it's a whole nother ball game. So uh, when I found that my sort of creativity was sort of was dwindling, and it was time to just blow something new <laughs> into my art, I started using color more, and you you can see me move on to watercolors, and watercolors are a pretty unpredictable. You, they seem to be so unpredictable and uncontrollable. Once you learn techniques, it definitely gets easier and you start to realize, hey, this is not so bad. Painting isn't that bad, right? And if you're used to the precision that colored pencils or just any sort of pencil medium, I guess, um, you start to get used to that. But with painting, it's more big picture, I found. And it's not like, it's not individual little shading things, especially if you don't have a huge variety of brushes, it's more general. This is the third time I'm using uh, these markers on this channel. They're paint, they're not paint markers, but they're paint, I think paintbrush tip markers or something. I don't know what they're called, <laughs> but it's very similar sensation to painting, but it's markers. This time, I wanted to try working in monochrome, which is just using one color in a variety of shades, and this is not what I usually do, but it was really fun to do, and I think it, it really turned out looking so cool. What is your art style, if you have one? I never really considered myself having an art style, so even if you don't think you do, maybe if you just take a look at your art, you can, you see what you naturally gravitate towards. Even if you're like, whoa, you can't, it's not so distinctive. I'm just so drawn to drawing faces and portraits. Ever since I could remember, it was always just eyes. I was drawing eyes. So I guess that is, this realism is sort of a main theme in what I do. Let me know what you do in the comments. That'd be so cool to hear. You can see me going in with a final dark green and finalizing 
all the facial features and where they go and the outlines and this is hands down the most nerve-wracking part because one wrong stroke here one wrong line there and it's gone it's gone Throughout this drawing with no erase challenge, I can definitely say that because you can't grab the eraser every five seconds, you know, the eraser is eliminated completely, you start to get a little more risky with your art, and you're more willing to take that chance because, well, you kind of have no choice at this point, right? And lately I've been feeling that Especially when you feel that you you have this precious art syndrome. In pottery, I heard it called precious pot syndrome, where you're like obsessing over every single detail on a pottery piece and you're so afraid to lose it. Well, in this case, at least for me, I've been feeling precious art syndrome. You have this obsessiveness over every single detail in your art and you're more hesitant to try new things and experiment because you're afraid of messing it up and that's natural but if you want to go farther maybe it's worth kind of opening up your horizons and a lot of the time the the most unexpected things and the most unexpected mistakes turn out to be the best ones you know and it so happens that you discover new things when you go out of your comfort zone and so with this challenge, this is what we are trying to achieve and it has been working. So if you're feeling the same way, then I really recommend trying this for at least a couple of drawings. You know, let yourself loosen up and put it in your mind that it doesn't matter how these will turn out. It's just an exercise and see where it will take you. Right now, we are going into my favorite part of this portrait, and it's the hair. The hair makes a world of a difference, and wait until you see it. It's going, it's gonna blow your mind. So what we're doing with hair is we're trying to get the general hairstyle in and trying to understand the general direction of where the hair flows. And I think for this face, I want to do the hairstyle, you know, the floof in the, I don't know what it's called, but where I guess it's like, up, like the boys brush it up brush their their bangs up with gel so and then the rest is a shorter so this is this is what we're going for i don't know what it's called write me a comment but with with drawing hair it's very important to go in with the idea of not individual hairs but general locks if that makes sense and you definitely have to Re-identify your light source and keep it in mind because where your light hits, there's it's going to leave a highlight on the hair, right? So that's how you can give an illusion that there that there is hair, you know, and, and it has dimension. What is your biggest challenge as an artist? Is it something specifically with drawing, like you have trouble drawing hands? Or is the hardest thing for you a part of the process, right, in drawing? For me, I find that lately it has been finishing what I've started. Sometimes when you when you start something, you're in the middle of it and it's not maybe it's not going as you expected or you're just so tired of doing the same thing over and over again. You have so many new ideas and you want to move on. Yeah, that that's that kind of summarizes what I've been feeling with art 
lately and this is like a recent thing before it was proportions but now especially when you start going big and doing big paintings yeah the whole finishing thing is is definitely something that needs to be worked on and especially when it's just so overwhelming but with this portrait we are coming through we're slowly getting there a trick that I found that helps with this a lot, at least for me, is if you don't feel like it, get up and go. <laughs> Just go, because if you continue to force yourself, you're going to ruin what you made and you're going to be even more unhappy. So get up, take a walk, take a breath of fresh air. The hair on this guy is almost finished and doesn't it look fantastic, right? It looks so good. When your portrait is almost done, I find that kind of reevaluating and taking it slow at the end and just seeing what additional details you could add, like an earring for instance, is, is really essential to the end part of the process. And these last moment last minute details and shading it's really minimal effort but it makes the maximum amount of change and it turns out that that uh that brush that brush pen that the end was all crazy it, it's actually a really cool it's a really cool shading shading brush and yeah so that also goes to show that weird weird things sometimes Things that are unexpected sometimes turn out in your favor. So, does a drawing with no erase actually help you get more comfortable with your strokes and enjoy the process of making art? Well, I don't know about you, but for me, definitely. So, thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, it would be wonderful if you could give back with a subscribe and a like to this channel. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you and I can't wait to see you in the next video. Bye!